Well guys, the ultimate find is here. This is a 1997 Land Rover Discovery Camel Trophy truck. Now what makes this extra special is this is factory built. You can tell from the roll bar installed inside. Now this particular car participated in the event in Mongolia in 1997, then was shipped over to the United States, sat for about 10, 12 years, and is in desperate need of a detail. We're gonna do that today, get this thing cleaned up, and then we're gonna sell it. Today on this episode of Drive and Protect. Ugh. So gross. The Camel Trophy event was an off-road overlanding competition held annually from 1980 to 2000, the majority of which featured specialty purpose-built Land Rovers. Over the years, the event featured various Land Rovers and Range Rovers competing across some of the planet's most rugged terrain. Now, by the mid-90s, however, the event became so popular that it was actually coined the Olympics of 4x4 and garnered over 1 million applicants vying for a spot in the competition. While these vehicles started their lives as production off-road cars, a production team at Land Rover pulled approximately 100 vehicles off the assembly line each year and then outfitted them specially for the event. Modifications included roll cages, skid plates, winches, specialty electric systems, snorkels, upgraded suspension components, auxiliary fuel tanks, lighting, roof racks, and expedition tools, just to name a few. In 1997, the event was held in Mongolia, with 20 teams from around the world participating, as well as 25 support vehicles. At the end of the event, competitors had the ability to purchase their vehicles. Now, this particular Camel Trophy truck was a support vehicle for the Mongolian government during the event and was subsequently imported to the U.S. in July of 1997 by an off-roading enthusiast. <laughs> With all of this said, step one was to drive the disco inside to evaluate the level of grossness inside the cabin. In particular, there's mouse droppings and acorns all over the seats. Do you see poop poops? When I cracked open the door for the first time, I saw spider webs, leaves, beehives underneath the hood, and of course, our friends, the mud daubers everywhere. But I could not get the rear door open. Huge pain in the butt, and we were spending hours trying to figure this out. Or the driver's side window at the same time, if that fell off the track. So we'll have to play with all those things later. But for now, it's time to give her a bath for the first time in over a decade. With the engine power washed, I then removed the mouse-eaten hood insulation to power wash the underneath part of the hood, and it looked great when I was done. Next, I soaked the paint and just let it sit or sort of marinate for a few minutes to loosen up the grime while I filled my wash buckets with foam paint cleanser and the wheel bucket with brute wheel soap. So one of the things I like to do, <laughs> one of the things I like to do when I'm washing a really old car is check the paint at the same exact time. So as I'm wiping, let me use an example here. I'm just gonna rub with my hand. And I pulled up, see a little tint of yellow in there? That means that the paint is coming off. So in the following steps, when I go to polish it, I know that lots and lots of residue is gonna come off. So a few things that I think about is, okay, make sure I have one, enough pads, uh, a bunch of polish because so much residue is coming off, you're gonna probably use a little bit more polish. And third, the most important is to have compressed air. We're gonna be blowing out our pads a lot here. And hopefully with the dead skin that's on top, meaning it's all dried out from sitting for years and years and years outside. As soon as I pull that off, because this is yellow, I think it's gonna look pretty good, but you gotta keep in mind how much paint do you have on this. That's sort of the key. So we're gonna test the door jam, test the paint here, polish it, and I bet you it's gonna look amazing. Next, I rinsed the paint and focused on the engine with Titan 12 and Plum. Now check out my floors in the process. This thing clearly was driven through the desert at some point in its 11,000 mile life. Oh, jeez Louise. 
Jeez. That is a lot of junk on my floor. With the paint now dry, I removed the heavily stained seed covers, which at least I tried to do, but the cover is actually pinched against the factory roll bar. So WD-40 to the rescue on the seat rails, and it came right out. There it goes. Uh -huh. In the back seat, there were two very old but super cool fire extinguishers mounted to the rear of the front seats that were removed along with the floor mats and the back seat covers. As I mentioned earlier, the back door was stuck and the outside handle didn't work either. So I tried going in through the cage with my arm. Then Jordan tried using the umbrella to open from the inside handle out, but that didn't work either. Then I used the hook for better leverage, no go. Then I decided to unbolt the cage, but they were so tight, I couldn't get them to move without stripping. So Ow. I called in the heavy artillery. The savior is here. Are you sleeping? Sleeping? No, I'm working. Oh, stop. Stop it. What could be more important than this? We need to get this door open. Screwdriver, maybe? Oh! <laughs> what were you doing? I tried the handle back. Well, let's see what we're... This is gonna be like some archeology span here. With that, we found the infamous red box holding the various tools, the spare Land Rover parts, and the equipment for the expedition. Uh, that's a lot of poop. <coughs> Tire iron. Extracurricular activities. <laughs> Bathroom time. You're a good man, sir. Let's see. Oh. Oh. Now at this point, the only thing left to open is oh. the glove box, and of course, there's a huge mouse nest inside. So I picked all of it up. I tossed the mouse house into the garbage and then started round one of vacuuming the years of dirt, the mud, the mouse droppings everywhere, especially the glove box. And then after that, I started the plastic cleaning process. When you're working on doors and they're very dirty, we normally use lather and a scrub brush. And it looks fantastic. But down here, you can see this is a kick panel. When you get in and get out, your shoe tends to scuff this. I see it a hundred times a day on cars and it really doesn't come out with a, with a scrub brush. You're gonna have to use something a little more aggressive. So what we're gonna do is use Titan 12, which is a degreaser. and let it sit there, spray a little bit on, and then you're gonna use a little, this is a 3M scuff pad, right? Something like a dish, the backside of the dish scrubber there. You take this and gently rub it. And what you're doing is you're using a bit more uh, aggression to get it out. But at the same time, it is still safe. Remember, this is plastic as well. Leather, you'd have to be a little bit more gentle. So I just took out this one streak. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna be doing all this here. It's gonna take a little bit more time, but it's gonna make the entire door look fantastic. Use lather for dirt and grime on here, and then I would use Titan on these door scuffs, which is a common problem when you do that. For the rest of the interior, I used lather, an interior brush, then the steam machine. Now, this type of material is very durable for obvious reasons, so you can be a bit more aggressive than, say, I don't know, a new Ferrari or a new Lamborghini, for example. On the armrest, I found what looks like very old gum or some sort of tar-like material. To remove this without damaging the material, I used a plastic razor blade and rapid remover very slowly. Now, this technique will not do this process quickly, obviously, but it will keep everything intact when you're done, which is the goal. For the glove box, I soaked everything in ammo digest for organic stains to eat the bacteria present from the fecal matter left behind. Right there, it's all liquid poop. You can see the brown liquid left over after the product removed it from the liner of the glove box. Afterwards, I shot it with my air diffuser filled with ammo shag to flush out the remaining contaminants. And after round one, it looked and definitely smelled much better.
Next, I blasted the carpet again with the diffuser, then the steamer, and then steam backed with a smaller head for the tighter spots. Ugh. Yummy! Okay, the interior is done and it wasn't that bad. That is a testament to putting seat covers on when you know you're going off-roading. But with respect to the outside, this is kind of exciting as a detailer because there's a thousand things going on. Right off the bat, we have oxidized paint, we have very thin paint, and we have stickers on top of stickers that we want to preserve. So a lot of things going on. Right off the bat, I'll show you the paint is about two and a half. So we have maybe a half a mil to a full mil of paint to polish. What does that mean as a detailer? That means we can't take off too much paint despite needing to take off a lot of paint because of the oxidation. So it's a little bit of a catch 22. So in that case, what I'm gonna use is a foam pad. And the reason we're gonna use a foam pad instead of a microfiber pad is this tends to hold the residue better. And at the same time, we're not taking off too much at a time because we may burn through the paint. So step one is to cover up the trim with masking tape. This car is gonna take like $30 and <laughs> masking tape. So if the polish is, is white, which most of them are, when it dries into this little area, you're never gonna get it out. It'll take you forever with degreasers and you know little brushes and things. So although I'm kidding, this is expensive and it is expensive. It's much cheaper and faster to put this on and see how I'm not really making it pretty because I'm only polishing this upper area. So it leaves me a little, I don't need to go crazy. Little, little flap here, it's fine. Um, but it'll be a nightmare if this gets hit by polish. It'll turn white in two seconds because of that dryness. Once done with the paint restoration, I broke out Ammo Skin Defense Sealant, which makes a lot more sense on this car because of all the stickers, the Take super that. thin paint, and because it's one of my favorite products for protection. I'm getting hungry, hungry. For the dry and faded trim, I use Frame Pro to restore the original deep rich black color to create contrast between the paint, the wheels, and the glass. Now I call it frame because you are essentially framing the vehicle to look better. Much like a beautiful picture that is placed in a frame, it stands out even more, sort of pops off the canvas. Same idea with four wheel works of art. Just for reference, I went through three towelettes on the disco because of the miles of black trim on this car. Then I clean the glass with the scrubber. Now it's essential on all glass, but especially here. The smudges that are caused from excessively dirty or let's say oily glass, which obviously this has plenty of, will take forever to get a streak-free finish without the help of the scrubber and the squeegee. In other words, you'll spend less time chasing streaks. Bright and early on the day of the reveal, I scrubbed the mats and the old extinguishers, then replaced them over the super clean and now dry carpets. The mats and the seat covers were critical to the finished condition of the interior and certainly a must have if you plan to drive across Mongolia in the future. I also noticed the headliner was sort of peeling down coming off the cushion so I added a bit of fabric adhesive to gently hard card the fabric back up onto the cushion. Finally, I added mud to the brand new tires. Now, when I first saw the Land Rover in a garage in Long Island, the tires were totally shot. And so the owner replaced them about a week ago just to have it so that it could get to the, sh the studio here. Otherwise, there's just no way. 
As you guys know, I believe every car has a story and this one of course is it traveled all through Mongolia and I do think these little rocks are from its travel. So I'm a huge geek, I just love this stuff. So I'm gonna collect as much as I can of the good ones and pass it on to the new owner. As a bit of a backstory, when this car was acquired earlier in the year, the goal was for both father and son to restore the trophy truck as a fun project together. But suddenly, and certainly tragically, the father passed away weeks into the ownership and before the work was to start. His son Joe is coming in to Ugh. see it for the first time since his dad's passing before he moves it on to what he hopes is a new family project for a fellow off-road enthusiast to enjoy. Come on in, man. Oh my God. Check her out. It's unbelievable. Crazy, right? It doesn't even look like the same truck. <laughs> Pop. Popped it out in two seconds and now the door opens. <laughs> awesome. Very Steve. We found some shovels in the back, uh, a bunch of, uh, clearly this was, the authenticity of this car is not in question. <laughs> okay. I can tell you that right now. Awesome. Uh, another testament to putting seat covers on. Yeah. I mean, look how clean that looks. Yeah, it's it like amazing. brand spanking new. We took out the uh, the extinguishers as well. We cleaned them all up, and that's so cool. Yeah, everything everything really looks good inside. Same thing, front seat looks amazing. The fact that it's a uh, a manual is also really yeah, no, cool. Yeah, that was part of the the charm. A one surprise for you. We got the nice. We we polished the plate as well. But I wanted to present you with something that I've been playing with for the last four or five days. These are the rocks, just a, <laughs> cool. a symbol of the rocks. We probably have 10,000 of them everywhere in the drains, awesome. but I wanted to save a couple for you. I think those are likely from Mongolia, I'm guessing. They were all yeah. in here. I He's mean, made like, a long trip. Yes, they did, so. <laughs> yeah, so my dad was a real estate attorney and a lot of times when family members passed on or got old, you know, he was a car collector, so they'd reach out as part of the estate and say, hey, we have this asset, we don't know what to do with it. Uh, a lot of times these cool cars pop up and you have the opportunity to, to look at them. So he was more of like a classic car guy, but this came across his desk and he knew I loved, you know, old trucks and Land Rovers. So we went and took a look at it. I think it was in April or May. You know, I didn't really know too much about the whole camel trophy vintage thing, but yeah. learned a little bit about it. Thought it was really cool. I actually thought of you, like this could be a cool disaster detail. <laughs> so uh, we, we ended up buying it. Um, he actually passed away over the summer, but I wanted to follow through and, you know, see this to fruition yeah. uh, and, and you know hopefully find a new home somewhere somebody appreciate the the car well i appreciate you thinking yeah. this is a fun project yeah, thanks sure man. thanks awesome if you are interested in owning a piece of land rover history i'll put an email in the description for more info while it's still available if you don't see it up there that means the car has been moved on as always thank you for watching and supporting your local detailers wherever you may be and i'll see you guys next time mm -hmm.